so small that, uh, and the printing is all done by hand, A, B, and C, and D. And okay. Lude, and the B comes out of it. Yeah, right. L-U-D-B, so it'll be right at the end of the L-U-D as well. Ludwig and Vig are very often the same thing, right? U-B, Ludwig, son. Visio, yeah, with luck, UVW. So then we'll look in the updates since he, those were done. The updates uh, have been done over the last hundred years. We're simply seeing this looking index. Ludwigson is a well known name. I don't think it's like a Smith or Brown. No, but it's well known. I've yeah. known Ludwigson in my time. Most of them were hung, I think, before they left. group and so on. 
the other route is that you might go the whole thing to find you. Now, there just isn't. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can ask for a Canadian brand of arms of your own. You start it going down the line. Or you can take, let's suppose you were the brother, your ancestor was the brother of the original owner of the coat of arms that you find in your Sure. Uh, therefore, you weren't entitled to use that. But uh, the, the, it's Canada's policy that they will use that coat of arms but make it different. And you make my sense? So, like, suppose that's a white line, or they might make a green line or something, something like that, you see. Um, it, and that's done a lot. You know Brian Excel. Yeah, yeah. I know you know, yeah. And that's a matter of fact, you know Excel. Yeah. Uh, so, I would put very little stock on this, and it's a story I have to tell about 20 times a day. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. And that's good, you've taken it very well. Have you kept any numbers? Uh, We've averaged about here? 25, what I would call serious uh, people a day. Yeah. That's such as yourself, you know, Jen, not just people killing time. Yeah, not a uh, Yeah, and so. Well, you know, I was so excited when I got the six pack of the glasses. Yeah. Um, I, first of all, I jumped in the car and we drove down to the States and I gave one to my old aunt who was ready to, you know, be yeah. yeah. And uh, she was just the right. She thought, wow. Where did you get the glasses? Well, I'm from that address. So I'm in that little book there. I love it. Yeah. There's the shipping bill and everything right now. Oh, yeah. Well, it, it, it's it's all right, very right interesting. Yeah, it's right there. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I tried to write to them. There's no. Yeah. No, there's no way that they're in business anymore. And uh, well, there's somebody to replace them. That's for sure. See, a lot of most of the stuff they say is true. The heraldic language. If you want to take the time, you can learn it. And these sort of things, all about the ordinaries and the charges. Yeah. This is all true. Sure. Uh, and but uh, where they stretch the truth is in tying your name to a particular symbol. Exactly. You know. Yeah. Now, it, it's possible there is that one, but there certainly isn't in my stats so I've proved that. So when, I, when I saw these little things yeah. here, you know, I kept thinking, well, that's a pretty generic thing. Right? Yes, it is. Like you said, oh, yeah. you know, and, and crosses are so generic, and, yeah. and the fleur de is yeah. so generic. Yeah. But the thing is, maybe that was the start point mm -hmm. for the coat of arms, mm -hmm. but maybe there, there was a little slash in the corner with a triangle, mm -hmm. or maybe there was something else with the Ludwig symbol. What I think you... What I think you should do is spend a, uh, some time at the family libraries. Go, do your genealogical work first. Sure. Okay. See where you uh, see how far you can get back on your ancestors. Now it's it's amazing what you turn up when you do. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're somewhere on the way in November. It's on the third right. No, I, I don't want to pour cold water on what you're doing. I want to encourage you that uh, do it like do it yourself, so you know you're doing it right. And I, I started doing my genealogical stuff last uh, last September, and I, got, I did very well at it, you know. Yeah, but you had your coat of arms, though, before you No, I didn't. That's a brand new coat of arms. Really? Yeah. Oh, I thought you would have had your coat of arms a long time ago. No, no. I wasn't looking for a coat of arms. I was just looking for my ancestors, you know. Okay. No, that, that's a Canadian brand of arms. Yeah, yeah. you mentioned that, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, yeah. that could very well happen to me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I have that. There were a lot more peasants than there were knights. Yeah. That's the exciting part of it. Yeah, that's right. That you, you can, uh, like, if looking for example, like, uh, well, the lieutenant governor, our last, last lieutenant governor, yeah. David Lamb, yeah. he was a poor boy from Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. Okay, he immigrated here, yeah. did very, very well, and he, he's comfortable. Oh, for sure. And uh, he brought his uh, um, Chinese traditions with him. You know, when when he, when he was appointed lieutenant governor, they all get a coat of arms, yep. okay? So he was asked, what would you like? And he said, well, I'd like to reflect my heritage. And so there's the Chinese dragon and the pearl. And I forgot to say, I think it's good luck or something like that. And I didn't learn until last week that the banners up here with the Chinese uh, symbols on it, that means don't look back, look forward. Yeah, and that's exactly what it says in Latin and the meat. And uh, th this is not a good photograph. Uh, the colors on, I did one, I met a shield for him in, in real gold, you know, yeah. and, and red, and it oh, looked beautiful. Yeah. And pinned on my wall at home, it's a letter from him saying how pleased he was with wow. you know. But you see, uh, the, the grant is done up like this here is uh, 
Uh, it's done on a sheet the same size and uh, a little bigger than that, probably. And that's done by hand. And so that's then registered. And how much does all that cost? Oh boy, I keep getting asked that. It's it, we're told not to suggest the price, but it, my experience, uh, a two-piece document, which is mostly artist space, okay, around twelve hundred dollars, a lot of money. Uh, a, a single piece where even the letters are all done by hand, you're looking anywhere, two to three thousand. Uh, it depends on the amount of, if you have them do the research or you do the research yourself. Uh, the, the artists themselves use gold on the, uh, you know, if, you're, if there is gold to use, they use gold. And of course, uh, artists take a long time to do things. And there's, there's included in that is initial fees for, uh, that cover the um, heraldic authority and the consultant fees if the one is used and so on. So, these little shields that are up in the wall there. Yeah. How much do you get one of those made up once you find out what the crest is? Oh, these sort of things. Yeah. What? Uh, and all these ones up here. Like, I'm the fellow that does them, so I can truthfully, really? I, oh yeah, these are all mine. I can truthfully say that it, it depends. Yeah. If it's a plain red shield, that's obviously a lot cheaper than yeah. You know, so it depends on the amount of design, but it's usually average around seventy five dollars. Uh, it's better when a person you know, I get a lot of people ask for it and they want a set for their sons, yeah, so on and so on, you know. Uh, and even grandsons sometimes. And you see this this symbol here. See that's symbol That's a very unique shield. Yeah, it is. That that I've never seen one like it before. And that was done in England. It looks like a tile. Did I not explain this one to you? No. Okay, it happens to be the wife of the chief herald, uh, Alison Watt, and she inherited this from her father. She obviously had no brothers, or the brothers died. So that's hers. Robert also has his own coat coat of arms. So now, um, when it came to register this coat of arms in in London, uh, when the father died, they it should be on a lozenge like that, just you know, just a diamond shape. Yeah, yeah. The the herald who did it had an awful time because of these rose, the roses, and so I've never seen it done before. But he misshaped, if you want to call that, the, the, the lozenge. And okay, so this particular one has the heart, which is a Canadian symbol for first daughter. So that's her mother's daughter. That's the daughter of the mother. Me. Now, they also have a son, yeah. and uh, Michael, and what they will do with his is pass Roberts down to him, you see. So, the problem comes here when uh, when the father or the mother dies, it's, uh, uh, it's only available right now um, while the daughter is uh, unmarried. The minute she marries, her name changes yeah. ordinarily, yeah. and uh, it, you can't use it because you can't use it with a different name. Right. The only way I can see that in Canada we'd be able to uh, accommodate this is if the uh, husband was to get his own coat of arms, right? And then it, hers would be combined in with it, and uh, while the name wouldn't be carried on, the design would be. You see, it would be quartered. Yeah, yeah, we have. Uh, I don't think we've even reached that point yet, and I'm sure there are people at this moment scratching their head, you know, how is it going to work? But you see, in Canada, it, it is the law that we have equal gender. You know, female is equal to a, a male. I know, you told me about it. Oh, the other day, so, yeah. yeah, there's yeah. the sons, and this is the daughters, you yeah. see, um, the uh, first daughter, second daughter, and so on. Yeah, I think so, but it's going to create problems. Uh, oh, it's not good enough just to hyphenate a name or something like that, you know, because uh, that, yeah, that can get a pretty ridiculous a name about this one. Mm-hmm. So, um, well, thank you. You're did I give you my card the other day? Yeah, 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 if you're in trouble, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you who to go to and so on. Yeah. But I thoroughly recommend you. Uh, I hope you put on a display like this more often. Like once well, a year would be nice. Yeah, it would be nice. It's kind of tiring. <laughs> uh, and, uh, I bet you've made a lot of nice people. Yeah, well, certainly. Yeah, and I've enjoyed it very much. Wow. Yeah. I'm sure we've enjoyed a lot of Scottish people coming in the door. They're really keen. I'm sure we've enjoyed you more than you enjoyed us. Oh, well, that's good.
Okay, we're just testing this right now, so. I'm afraid I have to put these on. Well, there you go. Oh, yeah, you do what you have to do. Yeah. same way as I'm putting on here. The normal method is uh, using leaf gold, either in a transfer form, where it's applied to what we call a mordant, uh, and, or if you want to put it that way, a glue, 
and uh, the glue is then uh, allowed to harden and then you would breathe on the glue to moisten it and then put your transfer or loose leaf gold onto it. It's a part of the craft that has died out to a large extent, but uh, the gold that's used is pure gold and therefore quite expensive. I still use them in some of my work, but of course the costs are uh, a factor to be considered. What I'm doing now is just putting a gold edge to the shield for no reason other than, than to make it look neat and tidy. This uh, the ticker shield is, let me see, um, yes, it's a New Caledonia uh, College University up north, and uh, it's, a, it's a recent grant, Canadian grant. Many of the new institutions like the colleges and the uh, cities and the individuals are getting Canadian grants or re-registering English grants and um, it is the difficulty is that we have no training for crafts people in this direction in Canada whereas in the old country that is like in England or, or any of the European countries it's part of the curriculum of, uh, of the art colleges heraldry plays a very important part so um, we'll, we'll have to eventually do something of this in Canada otherwise um, we will uh, lose the art and of course part of the art is wiping off the mess you make when you run over the edge but that's an old craftsman's trick so that's a little bit of what I would call imitation gilding and uh, the idea is to uh, make the side look presentable now what's needed now is uh, black highlights uh, in order to make it stand out and I'll, I'll do one line just so as you can see that. And again, the word craft begets the word crafty. And of course, no craftsman will turn down an easier way of doing something. And that's exactly what I'm doing now. I'm using a modern ink pen. This is a not a waterproof pen, but one that's water soluble. And I make... I to make the lines much better than using a brush. That's not quite true. I, I could I could use a brush with my rest stick and run run a black line down it. But uh, like I say, there's all crafts believe if there's a better way or easier way of doing something, well then you do it. So the black is intended to make the this particular uh, design stand out. You see what I've done there now, it makes it jump out. Now if I do one of the crosses, you'll see it again. Oh, I won't be able to do that now because the gold is wet. But um, as a craftsman, you, you have to know how to accommodate a particular task. And that's, that's where you rely on your the skills you learned in your trade and what is taught you. And in, in this generation, the last two generations, there's been so many new things, not, not the least of which is the uh, computer. We use the computer a lot uh, for initial drawings, and uh, it's wonderful for a lot of things, but it, it won't um, force out the old practices, but they will definitely assist. Uh, this happened in when they invented linseed oil many hundreds of years ago. It uh, was a major step forward in uh, painting things. Because prior to that, you, they used to use such things as egg white and say, things like that. So I guess down through the centuries, the craft of heraldry uh, has had many changes. And the uh, in, in something like 900 years, it's not enough to be a craftsman. You must be. Uh, you must have a good knowledge of the science of heraldry. And uh, there are those that uh, 
are, are specialists in just the science. Uh, it's very helpful if you know both. And uh, I've been very fortunate that way that I, I know quite a bit. Uh, the thing that you're panning on there now, we hope, will be uh, one of a, of a set of um, educational banners that will uh, take them from a book called Simple Heraldry. Uh, the two of the heralds in England made up this book with a tongue in their cheek, but it's a very good demonstration tool, and uh, we hope that we will be able to base a set of portable displays around several of these panels. Uh, we have permission from the, both the men are dead, but we have permission from their wives to, uh, to do this. An important part of our... Yeah, start again. Uh, start again. That's all right. An important part of, and very popular part of heraldry, is uh, the Scottish heraldry. Of course, the tartan and uh, the belt buckle that you see here, which is used with the tartan. And uh, the Scots are very proud of their tartan and their heraldry, and they have their own uh, regulatory body in Scotland called the uh, the Lion. King of Arms, and uh, most people who are not Scots wish they were because of all the tartans and, and system, a uh, plan system that they have. There are various uh, other things on the wall here. Uh, at the top are the emblems that are symbols that have been given to this, the apostles. Uh, an interesting one is the uh, Saint James the greater, the seashell, the seashell is the ancient symbol of a pilgrim. And in the Crusades, when the pilgrim was making his way by foot to the Holy Land, he knew that if he found a house that had a shell hanging on the door outside, that he could find free food and lodging there, because it was considered to be a, a holy thing to, to give shelter and food to a pilgrim. And so all of those there, of course, the one in the middle is the St. Andrew the Scot, Scottish uh, patron saint. He's also...